right, we're here at Eurobike 2022 at the Bosch booth with our American friend in Germany, hi, hi. in Frankfurt. Steven, what's your official title with, with Bosch? Oh, I lead our product management business development team in, in North America. And Steven's been with Bosch for quite some time. We've gotten to know each other for quite some time. And we've done some of these videos about new products and you guys kept loads of new products to, to show here. We saw the smart system last year and now you've got all sorts of expansion on this, yeah. different peripherals and different stuff like that. And, and this bike is showcasing some of them. So we're gonna get into some of that. One of the big things that you guys are showing at the show is, is the ABS system. Given your experience in the automotive and stuff like that, it makes perfect sense that you're bringing this technology yeah. to the bike space. Uh -huh. Yeah, Bosch pioneered the use of uh, anti-lock braking systems, ABS, in the automotive world years ago. We were also the first to bring it to motorcycles. And of course, we're the first to bring it out in, a, in, in production for uh, e-bikes. So it's, big, it's a big development, yes, uh, but it fits very much into Bosch's expertise. A few years ago, we launched another version of ABS. The Generation, sort of generation one. one. Yeah. ABS, and it was a, a pretty large form factor, a pretty large black box uh, here that, that, that did that work, and we've made lots of improvements. We learned a lot uh, from that first product. Here it is now, the new product, you can barely see it, uh, integrated behind the fork, and it's 77% uh, smaller, uh, much lighter, and, that, and just has a better performance as well, so you'll, you'll know to a, a better braking experience with it. It's like a kind of like hydraulic fluid, mm -hmm. like regulator effectively, right? Uh, because the, the brakes are using hydraulic fluid, you usually actuate just with the lever, and mm -hmm. but this is just kind of regulating the flow to allow for that fluctuation depending mm -hmm. on the, the need. So in, in collaboration with uh, Mercura on that, you know, we focus on the ABS hardware yeah. and you know the traditional braking components and rotors and that. Uh, that's where you know Amagura has that expertise, and there are a few elements that go to it. You know, here are the ABS center. That's where you know the the fluid is being regulated. It's being powered. It actually does use a small amount of power from our battery. Yeah. Not enough that you're going to recognize it in your range or anything. Uh, you have a smaller tone wheel here and a sensor. Uh, that that you're getting a speed sensor from that on the rear wheel as well. And what you're doing, you know, you're taking sort of speed readings of both your front and rear wheel. You know, if there's variance, you that that starts That's to some give you skidding an, or an indication like that, right? that, the, uh, that there's potentially a braking issue, right? Yeah. And then it starts to actuate through yeah. that hydraulic system. So just in the same way that if you make a sudden stop in, in a vehicle, you're going to feel that pulsing. Well, yes. Uh, yeah. It's the same, a very similar experience on the e-bike. You know what happens if you grab the front brake? It's designed so that you're not going to be able to lift the rear wheel up. Uh, I've seen this before. In, this is a uh, pretty, kind of a pretty serious. So. I'm kind of like <laughs> half laughing about it. I had my own experiences of flipping over the handlebars, but yeah. uh, actually, this is this is a really big deal. And and I think you think about it more and more novice riders coming into the space, mm -hmm. and not even if you're just a novice rider, but actually, that was one of the things, like thinking about it on a mountain bike, in this sort of application, you wouldn't really think that this, like, hey, it's a sport rider, right. like this is a serious bike, like do you actually need yeah. this thing? So when we first introduced ABS, uh, that first generation, it was really one mode, you know, and it was designed for sort of a, trekking applications or yeah. you know sort of a somebody mix suddenly opens the car door and you're like yeah, exactly. let me just slam on the brakes or, you know or you you've come to a little gravel corner and you know yeah. you're potentially sliding out there uh, with this we've been able to really customize it for different users so we have a sort of all road version a touring version yeah then we have a cargo version so right now we have it only for the front loader cargo yeah you know with that usually a smaller wheel different weight variations so there's some you know, really specific braking characteristics in a situation like that. And and we also have it on a, a trail version, so for mountain yeah. bikes. And this is, it is different. It helps in safety, but what's really exciting on the mountain bike version is that it's it definitely has a performance value as well. When you're mountain biking, of course, you, you want to be safe going into turns and everything, but it, it actually will help you in your braking that you can brake faster. And if you can brake faster, generally you can you can go faster. Not that that's the only goal with mountain biking, but it yeah. does add a, a performance benefit that we hope will help it appeal to a, a broad range of mountain bikers as well. So while we're here, let's take a look at this uh, brand new controller that's integrated in the top tube. 
It has you know, on off, of course. You can adjust what, what power mode you're in. Short press to go up, long press to go down. You'll see you know, other versions that do sort of cycle. We, just, we, through our user experience studies, found out that this was a preferred solution since it's a huge difference between turbo and eco if you're yeah. accidentally in eco because you've gone one over uh, too far. It also has five battery level indicators to give you a good overview of what your range is. These indicators will actually change color when it's down 10%. So you can use just this and nothing, yeah, nothing else for like a mountain bike and mm -hmm. for a lot of people. And, and some people might be thinking, well, what, on a mountain bike, sometimes I feel like I need to change the assist a lot. Yeah, so we also just added this year our new mini remote. Fits in well, it has three buttons. But where's the wire though? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> no wire at all. This is a Bluetooth. It's got its own battery. And you can also add other displays if you wanted to. The, whole, the system's very compatible you know, across our range, very modular that uh, you could use it with a, a Kiox display on there or our new Intuvia display, which I'll show you here in a little bit. You could use it with your smartphone, with our smartphone grip. So, so I guess that's part of the story. You continue to expand on the display peripherals, all that sort of thing, but you're also expanding on the motor system yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. This is the CX version, which we introduced last year already with, yeah. when we brought out the smart system, but it's also available now in a, in a cargo version in a speed version, in a uh, performance line uh, version, and a performance line speed version, so that you can, you know, whether it's a trekking bike or a cargo bike, you have different options. And what, what would you say are like kind of some of the fundamental principles of the smart system specifically? I mean, this yeah. more connectivity is one. Mm -hmm. and connectivity is a very important to us going forward. And part of that is the, the connectivity just between the different components that yeah. we have that they're all speaking the same language, that it all works together seamlessly. And, and that allows us to have these different options with the displays and the controllers, but it also allows us to have a controller speak to the battery or when there's a lock situation like we'll talk about, that you could... Well, this lock thing, I'm really excited about this, Steven. I mean, you guys know, like, this is one of the comments that comes up all the time. I'm sorry to yep. interrupt you, but yep. like, you can just see my excitement <laughs> about a lock, yeah. alarm, and yeah. GPS tracking exactly. all coming in a smart system, only really possible in in this new system. You know, some people might feel like a little bit like, yeah. said, but maybe you could, you know, put a Apple AirTag or something like that. But but this new technology is really next level. And I could appreciate that sometimes you need different hardware to, right. in order to make that possible. Some of the stuff, it takes a little while for that to roll out. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to mention before we get into some more of the technology that the ABS, I think, is something that's going to take a little while to see in our home market of the U.S. Uh, and we, Europe. we do need to be clear that this, this was uh, available for European markets this model year, yeah. uh, but won't be available until next year uh, in the North American market. So that would be yeah. about this time next year, you would start to see it rolling out. I mean, it's cool yeah. that it's coming. And, and you know, the reality is it takes a while for bike manufacturers to actually implement these things. Mm -hmm. And many of the bikes will continue to use, you know, different systems depending on the needs, depending on, you know, budgetary concerns or whatever yeah. the case may be. But it's great to see what the latest and greatest and what where we're going with this and, and especially the stuff that you know just really improves the the usability the ride experience the safety features mm -hmm. all things that are really you know you guys stand for in this idea of invented for life and that's a great they? part about the smart system is that it is it is going to allow more compatibility going forward for additional products and third-party solutions as well and once you've got a bike with that system it really does open up a lot of possibilities going forward Let's show a little bit more of what, what, what we're actually seeing inside the, the smart system. So here we're talking about the Flow app. This is really important for the whole smart system. Yeah. This is what you download on your phone. It gives you access to understand your bike. Uh, it gives you access to update some things and to control uh, some different uh, com components within your bike. It also gives you the option to do uh, navigation. So if this were set up to your bike, you'd be able to come into the map be able to pick a destination where you wanted to go, select what type of writing you wanted to do, and it would give you, you know, a great navigation experience getting there. Uh, you could also it. use like GPX files and stuff mm -hmm. like that, yeah. create your own maps. Yeah, and you can use like Komoot uh, yeah. mapping uh, to, to find a trail in advance that you want to use, especially for like mountain biking applications and things like that. And also with this, you have your statistics, so you can see some information about your rides, if you wanted to go go in a bit deeper on a specific ride, 
to know how far you went, how long you went, your average speed, your elevation readout, your speed readout, your cadence. Wow, this is really uh, impressive and, on the and data your, side. Your power. So you can you can share this information with Apple Health. Yeah. You could share it with Strava if you're using Strava for your training uh, to have all of your health information in one place. And you know, you, you and that. I always have these like deep conversations, like <laughs> the thoughts of where we could potentially yeah, go yeah, yeah. with this and yeah. and maybe potentially like sharing this like with your insurance company or sure. your healthcare provider. Sure. Or maybe you're gonna get a reduction on your insurance based on how much you're riding. Yeah, or, so or, we're, there are already uh, companies around today that will, you know, that are providing cycling incentives to their company. If you can show that you've done this many miles or something a month, you'll you'll receive a, a compensation from your employer as part of your sort of health and wellness package. The Quick reminder, you still get exercise and it's really great for your health to actually ride an e-bike, yeah. contrary to popular belief at times. And actually, one of the things like heart rate we're talking about, you right. know, it's like you can actually use yeah. a heart well, rate. Yeah, and you can, so you can connect this to your Apple Watch, uh, have your heart rate data here as well. So that's the sort of thing because with the electric assist you can actually more easily maintain a heart rate. I mean you mountain uh -huh. bike and that sort of thing and sometimes you're going way up and then you're going down and sometimes it can be difficult to actually maintain that to some extent. But with electric assist it can be a little bit right. easier to right. maintain the, the active heart rate or these things are actually very yeah. beneficial to your health. The truth is whether I'm on an electric bike or a, a, a regular bike it's always up to me how hard I want to work. Sure. You know. Just real quick okay. while we're here, this is a 750 and this is the CX motor. This is the battery and the drive unit that were first introduced as, as the smart system and we'll show you some uh, smaller batteries and then additional drive units over here. Cool. Chris, so here I wanted to show you our new display. This is an Intuvia, the, so the successor of our previous Intuvia. If you're using the handlebar controller or the top tip controller, and you also want to have uh, some displayed information, your speed. And if you want to have a little bit more information, you do have the option to use this Intuvia display. You could also use the Kiox display, which you know. This is a pretty pretty simple, but very functional display. It comes with different mounting options, you know, different angles. You can position it different ways, out here, over here. It gives you really your basic information. It's wireless, it has its own battery, and, but it, it'll speak together with this controller. It gives consumers the option if they want to upgrade after. They can add something like this, or they could add the smartphone grip, for example, if they wanted yeah. to use their smartphone as a display. That's growing more and more too, right? With yeah. using that, that display, and that, that's something you guys launched not too long ago. So this is a, a 500 watt hour. We've added this and a 625 watt hour power tube to the smart system portfolio. So that just allows you know, different frame options, uh, lighter weight options for everything from you know lighter mountain bikes to the city bikes. We also have added the performance line drive unit into the smart system portfolio. This is you know super silent, super smooth. We've added more torque to this as well. So this now does 75 newton meters of torque out of our performance line drive unit, which we also have available in the U.S. in a performance line sport version, which goes up to 28 miles an hour, so a class Great. three yeah. version for the U.S. market on that. And you're also showcasing these products uh, on the bike here. So, right. and I mean, I think, think that's kind of one of the cool things about this performance line motor. It really can get well integrated into the frame. And then with that smaller battery, you allow for this smaller frame size and exactly. different things like that. Yeah. And so this one has the Kiox display on, as, as, you, as you mentioned, the Kiox 300. Actually, this brand, I know you guys are kind of hiding it a little bit, but this Schindenhauer is uh, really nice. We've actually been talking with them a little bit about bringing their bikes over because they are, what do you guys think? You say good on this one? I mean, you can really have an awesome city experience now with, the, with these components. You have the option for the Kiox display, or you can swap that out with the smartphone grip on the same yeah. base mount, uh, the controller, the, the power tubes in the smaller size integrate even you know, even in a tighter fit, and right. this performance line drive unit with that smoothness and, and, and zero sound level, essentially, and uh, it's, a, it's an awesome experience. You added the performance line. Mm -hmm. You've also expanded the same form factor as the CX into the speed and, right. the, and, and the, the cargo, cargo. line mm -hmm. as well, right? Yep. So you're really uh, starting to offer that full portfolio of, of products in the, in the new smart system. All right, we're gonna share looking at this bike because uh, lots of excitement in the booth overall. I mean, just loads of new things, a lot of new technology. People are really excited about so it. This is a larger power pack, so a 725 watt hour version. 
Uh, we're also introducing it in a 545 yeah. uh, watt hour version. So you know, for cargo especially, or for those longer tours, giving people an option. And the, and the great thing about it is you, they're interchangeable. So a 545 would fit on the same mounting setup as a 725. Oh, so okay. The, so just slightly user, taller, right? Just on slightly the taller, yeah. So not all bikes. You know, of course, it depends on the, on the shape of the bike, if there's room for a larger battery pack to fit in there. But for the most part, you know, an end user who buys a bike with and wants to upgrade to the 725 can. All right, so I'm going to ask you one question that probably will come up is, mm -hmm. is hey, well, I want to put, you know, this battery or this display on an existing bike that yeah. I already have that's not smart system. Yeah. This is not necessarily backwards compatible, right. you know, based on some of the different plugs and different mm -hmm. things that you, you've used on this new, you know, new system. And I see it. I mean, like you're fitting a lot more into it, so mm -hmm. I kind of get it that uh, you know, sometimes you have yeah. to make these changes. Yeah. No, it is. It is a cut. You know, from the the smart system yeah. products to the previous, and we changed it in in lots of ways. Everything from the connectors to the mounting points to yeah. and it and it it just yeah. this doesn't work to bring all of the things we want to bring with the smart system yeah. to keep to make that backwards compatible. So it is uh, a new setup, and um, they all they do need to be all products from that smart system generation going forward to be compatible together. People might be concerned, hey, am I, is my product going to continue to be supported? Yeah. This is really the big question, yeah, right? Yeah. There are, are more of our previous generation product on the market by far than our yeah. smart system product. Of course, we're going to support that product. You'll still see updates now and again and uh, yeah. upgrades in that area as well. Um, so, no, that product is. Still so, we can still get parts and stuff like that. Absolutely. Because this is a big topic that Absolutely. comes up in the industry. Yeah. You know, as many of you know, I'm a retailer. I've been yeah. doing this for 11 years. And, and this is a big thing I think about. And this is one of the reasons why we exclusively yeah. work with you guys because I feel confident I sell a product that in, you know, five years plus, like, I'm going to be able to get well, that's, and that's these parts. You know, that's part of who we are at Bosch. You know, we came originally from the automotive market. And that's what you do when yeah. you develop a product for automotive. You plan on that product being on the road for years and years and years. And we're the same way with our e-bikes. I think we covered most of the topics, but there was one that I was super excited about, and I uh -huh. talked about it, but we actually didn't get a demo on it. And I'm sure okay. that you guys want to see a demo on it. And it's this alarm uh -huh. system. Huh? OK. OK, so we're actually activating the lock on here. This is, uh, again, using the, the phone display option we have right. here. And you actually even have this this uh, the smart grip, which is pretty cool. So you can actually put your your phone in here, and this actually will do like wireless charging yeah, as yeah. well, which is really cool. So here we've just enabled the e-bike lock or the lock and the alarm, and this gives you just an added layer of, of security for your bike. Of course, you know a physical lock, you should do that as well. But in here you have you have different options. So you can have an on bike alarm. So if somebody you know, starts to move your bike a little bit, you know, it'll, it'll make an audible noise to say, essentially, hey, I'm armed, don't, or I'm And that's one of the things, like, you actually have in there, it's like an accelerometer. This mm -hmm. is an add-on part mm -hmm. to the Yeah, it's motor the Bosch system. connectivity module that yeah. can uh, be added to the to e-bike the e placed inside there. So you can have alarm notifications so that it will send you, you know, if you're away from your bike, you can get a notification alert on your phone saying, hey, your bike's alarm is off. It's actually using like a cell signal mm -hmm. to effectively mm -hmm. send you a text message or that sort of thing. Huh? Yeah, exactly. And you have a locking sound. It sounds very similar to when you lock your car or unlock your car. Mm -hmm. uh, when you activate the lock, you'll hear a little beep beep out of the drive unit from the e-bike. It's not a physical lock to the motor, but it does lock the system, say. So if someone were to come with a, uh, with a different display or a different phone, or if you had you know, a controller like this already on it, uh, that bike, they would not be able to operate it. They would not be able to use it. Uh, kind of like would, brick it, if you will. Like that's what we call it with phones, it you know. essentially bricks the electronics and that can only be undone by by the user. By the user or yeah. an authorized dealer exactly. or something like that. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I really think that this technology is really gonna start to put a dent in, in, in some of this as thieves or understand that, hey, right. As much as I might be able to steal this bike or steal a component or something like that, but actually the Bosch components don't really do me any good or like what, what am I going to do with this stuff? I, I, I think that's a big deal and I really appreciate that you guys are, are bringing this and I'm excited about uh, where, where we'll go from this yeah, because yeah. I think security is one of the bigger limiting factors for sure. people actually getting out on the bike. Yeah, they're not inexpensive. Yeah. and. Uh, 
especially if you, you with all the benefits that you can have with modern e-bikes today, uh, there's so many great features, but if, if you're worried that your e-bike is going to get stolen, if that's a risk, if we can do anything to mitigate that, yeah, that, that goes a long way to helping people enjoy the e-bike experience. I'm not sure if I mentioned it specifically, but you, there would be then tracking information as well that you could see where your bike is if it were ended up being taken away. Let's say, for example, the Apple Find My thing, you know, one, it's going to notify the thief potentially if they have an iPhone. Right. And two, it's it's really dependent on other users, but this actually has its own separate cell signal that it's, it's quite a robust system from yeah. that sense. Yeah, that, it, that you'll have you have a cell signal giving you real time information of the bike moving or where it is, you know, and, and you can share that information with with, with law enforcement or whoever yeah. uh, to help you then relocate that e-bike and get it back. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about some of those scenarios in New York, like I'm going out to dinner or I'm going to the movies and like to be comforted that like in my mind, it's like is somebody touching my bike or something, but I could get notifications whenever that sort of stuff's exactly. going on and, mm -hmm. and really to, to have, you know, some comfort into knowing yeah. that, it's, it's yeah. really quite cool. Even just that, that noise that it makes as soon as it's jostled yeah. sends a very, really important signal and yeah. that'll go a long way uh, together with the tracking and, you know, traditional locks as well. You have multiple layers of Definitely security. need to use that as multiple well. Multiple layers of security. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We we'll look forward to a place where we don't need to, but yeah. hey, we're yeah, gonna deal with maybe. what we got, yeah. you know. But, yeah. but Stephen, really appreciate it as always. It's just oh, great to talk been, to you. Been awesome, and you're always so great at showing us through. And you've been out here doing some, tra you know, additional training on the new product. It's an exciting time in e-bikes, yeah. and I hope you have, you know, time to look around and see everything going on. You know, so many Bosch partners here showing exciting e-bikes. Yeah. And get a chance to go demo. Maybe you can ride the. Uh, the ABS system out there for yourself. Definitely planning on it. Okay, so. if not, come by our office. We'll get you on it. <laughs> That's great. All right. Thanks, Thanks so Chris. Much.